Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Power Selling Podcast. I'm your host, Dana Crawford, the Power Selling Mom. Today, I'm joined by Nanette Zupan, and she is an online seller of antiques and collectibles. She began selling at antique malls, swap meets, antique fairs in the 1990s, and she joined eBay in 1997 and started selling antiques and collectibles online in 2000. Nanette has sold over 65,000 unique items, amounting to over $2 million in sales on eBay. The most significant item Nanette ever sold was a life-size plush baby elephant. The most expensive item she has ever sold was a Tiffany Victorian sterling silver casket that sold back to the archives at Tiffany. Nanette won a 2019 Gold Award on the eBay Shine Awards for Small Businesses and has been a repeat guest on the eBay for Business podcast. We're so proud of her. Nanette is passionate about learning and has taken courses in antiques and the history of decorative arts at UCLA Extension and the University of Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Since 2020, Nanette has written over 300 pages about antiques and collectibles for WorthPoint, their online dictionary. Nanette lives in Southern California with her husband and their three children, a cat, a dog, and two turtles. Nanette is a proud graduate of Hunter College High School, Rice University, BA, Economics, and French cum laude and UCLA School of Law, and I'm so happy to have her on the podcast today. So without further ado, let's get started. So happy to have you here, Nanette. Please share, when did you start selling online? Well, first, Dana, thank you so much for inviting me, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm one of the old timers. I started in 1997, which probably sounds a a little familiar to you. Yes, it does. (laughs) Yeah. So I started, maybe many people back then, I was just looking for sort of household goods for an apartment and started looking at auctions, estate sales, garage sales, and noticed that people were reselling. So this is even a little bit before eBay. Um, I found this sort of reseller's world and people were then using like um, flea markets and antique malls. So I did both of those things in the beginning and then found eBay in 97. Wow, that's really fascinating. Yeah, we're we're the same. We're 97. It was a, right. a popular popular year to get started on eBay. Did you were you selling beanie babies? Um, I wasn't selling beanie babies, but when I was selling at the antique malls, other sellers were selling beanie babies because I think then they were new, right? So you had to have yeah. a contract with Ty, but people would get their shipment in and I remember like a stampede of customers coming in and the things were selling for six or eight hundred dollars and I thought, you know, what mm-hmm. is this? And that yes. was even before really the internet, but that was it was you know, a very uh, uh eye-opening moment because you thought aha there's like a lot of demand for some things that you would think you know who would really want this but a lot of people wanted them it's a long time to be selling so what changes have you seen to online selling over the past 25 years well i've seen of course a lot of changes first just technology but um things have gotten a lot easier but also just the platform i mean in the beginning ebay was sort of a pioneer auction or amazon was there but mainly for books in the beginning. So you didn't have a lot of choices. And uh, just over time, I've seen a lot more choices, a lot more platforms, um, a lot more specialized areas, and also more competition, more resellers. It used to be pretty unusual to find other people that were selling online, even in the garage sale scene or the thrift store scene. Most people were just, if they were flipping it, they were flipping it locally or at a swap meet or something. So uh, I think it's kind of added, it's added opportunity, but it's added challenges. Yeah, there, there's a lot more platforms now than just eBay. eBay was the main source, right? Right, for a long time. Yep, but they're still yes. number one. <laughs> yes, yes. I still I still tell people for used items, if you're selling any kind of, you know, it could be antique, it could be from 2023, you know, but once it's kind of used, like eBay is a, a sweet spot. And now, of course, we can look elsewhere too, but that's a good place to start. Yeah, yeah. I see you have quite a store on Etsy, I've noticed. Yes, Etsy, even still, let me 
that's sort of my biggest platform, I think, because um, Etsy, as you may know, you either have to have a handmade item by you or a vintage item, which they now define. I think it's 2001 forward, but it might even be 2003 because they up it a little every year. So it's it, it it's restricting a little bit what you can sell, but Etsy is a nice community. I don't know if you've tried it. It's a smaller yeah. market than an eBay, you know, far smaller than an Amazon, but it's pretty dedicated buyers. And I was thinking about this this morning, you know, maybe I've had one return on Etsy, very few. It's not a returning thing like those buyers. They're specialized. They know what they want. They're willing to pay a little bit more. They're courteous. They're kind. So all of this makes me interested in Etsy and um, anything I have that that's good on eBay that hasn't sold, you know, immediately, I would definitely mm -hmm. consider putting it on Etsy also. And uh, I might get a few more dollars on Etsy, but it might take a little longer to sell. Okay, good tip. Good tip. I know my very first sale on Etsy was from you. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember that. That was, and that was a handmade item. So you were right in this <laughs> Yeah, one of my crazy uh, face masks. I thought, you know, I'm going to make millions off uh, sewing face masks. <laughs> but anyways, I got better at it over time. But um, thank yeah. you for that. You were the oh. launch of my first Etsy sale. You're welcome. Yeah, that was funny. I do remember that. But I think, you know, kudos to you for trying something new, because I think another thing I've seen in the 25 years is be willing to try new things and don't That's get right. stuck on one platform or don't get stuck doing one thing because you never know. It could have been like your huge thing, the face masks. That's it. So with that said, what tips can you give to a new seller looking to ramp up their sales? Well, I would say, um, going back to the being flexible, always be flexible and look at what's new. Look at what platforms are new. Look at what methods of, of selling are new. And don't get too stuck, um, both from selling your whole processes, from sourcing to listing to shipping. Um, you know, always just have an eye out to what is changing and be willing to change. But also, um, with that being said, Look for ways where software can help you. I know people are now getting scared of AI, but even before this current sort of um, surge, there's always been software that's helpful to resellers that's been running in the background. And I think if you can try some of those things out, experiment and adopt them early, you can gain a lot of time and you could really ramp up your sales without spending a lot of money on employees. And empl employees are great. I've had a lot of part-timers over the year, but you can maybe use mm -hmm. them for more specific functions. If you have something that is easy to do with software, taking over some of the mu mundane tasks, like um, you know, photo editing, cross-posting, um, some accounting functions, a lot of that stuff can be done much more cheaply using mm -hmm. a, a program. Sure. Sure. So what tools can you recommend for someone that is already selling and can ramp up their sales to six digits? Well, I would say, um, first of all, look at where you're selling. We've talked about eBay. We've okay. talked about Etsy. There's a lot of other platforms, too. And you could kind of just um, first observe and say, OK, I have this kind of item. Maybe I have men's clothing. Maybe I should look at Grailed and just kind of get an idea of what kind of items are selling on what platforms and um, whether you have them or not. And so if, if you're looking to sort of expand your sales by venturing out to new platforms, I would look at List Perfectly, which is a cross-posting tool. And you have, you of course work for List Perfectly and have your yeah. shirt on, but basically yeah. what it's doing is it's kind of taking your web page and sort of scraping it is how one seller put it to me. So they're taking all of these fields and copying them and basically pasting them onto the form for a new listing, like say from list perfectly to eBay or list perfectly to Etsy, or you can go platform to platform. So this is a huge time saver. And yes. um, you can yes. do more than just cross post with list perfectly. You can also um, sort of edit, bulk edit and manage listings from it, but I would say if you do nothing else but cross post with it, it's going to save you time and it's going to expand your sales. You're just right. getting more eyes on the same item. But yes. uh, another tool that I love that actually is within List Perfectly, I found this tool independently, is Photo Room, which is, mm -hmm. um, I use it as an iPhone app. You could also use it within the tool to remove backgrounds and enhance photos. And it's so much faster. I think in 
maybe around 2010, I had a high school employee who was dedicated only to sort of retouching photos, removing backgrounds, adding white backgrounds. That was her whole job. You know, that's what I paid her for two years for. Oh and now Photo Room does it like in the blink of an eye. Exactly. Um, so that's a good one. And then I'm also, this is yeah, new for me in 2024. I'm a long time QuickBooks user, but QuickBooks, you know, I, I, I love it, but I hate it. I complain about it. It's more tool than I need. I used to do a lot of Amazon sales and it was really important mm -hmm. to track the inventory, those replenishables that, you know, would tick down. And if you had them on other platforms, that was very important. But now I'm more doing unique items on eBay, Etsy, um, that kind of site. So I found through the reseller community, community mm -hmm. another program called Seller Ledger. It um, is pulling, it pulls your sales okay. from different platforms and it pulls your expenses from um, bank accounts and from credit cards. And I think what a time saver, even compared to what I was doing mm -hmm. for so year, many years with QuickBooks. So just, those are just a few that I use. There are other okay. ones, but um, you know, if you're saving 15 minutes here, 30 minutes here every day, you're listing more things, you're selling more things. Yeah, I and, and these, um, oh, this perfectly, actually, if you sign up, you can get a discount. I have a code, it's called CAT LOVERS. It's all caps. Okay. And I think you will get oh. a 30% discount off of uh, the first month. And it's a great way to try the platform. Some of the other things that I mentioned, I just love them. I don't have That's a code, right. I don't, um, I'm not an affiliate or trying to to push anyone to use anything. I'm just sharing things that I think okay. can actually ramp up your sales. Of course. Yeah. And, and thanks for sharing your code. I, I think that um, everybody that is part of list perfectly, all subscribers do qualify for the referral program. So it's important that as a community that we all help each other out. And yes, I do work for them, but I am also a super fan and a super user. So I only promote what I believe in. And I know you do the same with your meetup group, which is very successful in Long Beach. Um, if you could quickly tell people how to find that, because I know the meetup group is um, very helpful. Right. Um, so first of all, there's a couple different ways to find it. It's called the Southern California E-Commerce Sellers Meetup Group. And an easy way to find it is if you go through eBay, eBay has a seller events page. And um, if you navigate, you could just even Google eBay seller events you'll get kind of onto the landing page and there are some um, filters and you could filter by geographic region. So select the West and you'll find it pretty soon. Another way to find events is by date. And we have one coming event that's actually list perfectly coming out to Long Beach to chat mm -hmm. with some of uh, our members and we're going to lunch. And uh, so that's one way to find it. And we also have a page on Meetup, which is an older mm -hmm. platform which you can either access on the web um, or on an app and find meetings that way. Perfect. Yeah. It's a great tool. And I know Dean who was uh, with us on the last episode and he mentioned that he has learned so much from being a part of that meetup group. And then after the show, I thought we should have announced how to find the meetup group. So thank you for sharing that. Right. I would say the easiest way is probably through eBay, but um, yeah. yeah. Now I encourage people to give it a try. It's not just one platform and it's people of different backgrounds, ages, experiences. So if yeah. nothing else, even beyond the speakers, you learn from the other people in the group. That's right. That's right. So getting back to you, tell us what kind of, or how do you decide what kind of items to sell? Well, for me, I am sort of a, mostly used item kind of antique and collectible seller, but I will sell more recent things too. I'm just looking mm -hmm. for unique items. I'm looking for things that you can't necessarily walk, you know, right now into a mall and find. So okay. either they're a little bit vintage or maybe they're limited edition or kind of um, retired. So just something that's a little challenging to find. That is fun for me to find these things that are hard to find that people are looking for and to bring them onto the marketplace. So um, I think a lot of people try to kind of reduce it to a formula. Like I will only source items if I can make whatever X times my yeah. money. 
two or yeah. three or five or 10 or whatever your number is. And I try to encourage mm -hmm. people to maybe look a little beyond that. Like don't limit yourself to something so specific. But when I look at something, I think, okay, you know, what do I have to pay for it? So that's part of the analysis. How many times do I think I can um, flip this for? But also how quickly can I sell it? Um, how mm -hmm. quickly can I list it? How much room does it take to store? So for me, it's kind of a more complicated analysis. And I just want to make sure that I have some items that are going to be moving quickly, but I'm willing to sit on other items that will make me more money in the end. If, mm -hmm. you know, all of these other things work, if I think I can list it without too much trouble, if I have a place to store it. Um, speaking of sourcing, um, do you think that thrift store sourcing continues to be a viable option in 2024? I think it does, and I'm sure that many people who are reselling are using the thrift stores, but I think, as I spoke a little bit earlier about always looking to see what's new and being flexible, like be flexible mm -hmm. because I think it's changing. Like everyone probably has their own local stores, but for us, one of the challenges in Southern California is that more and more items are getting pulled from the local stores and sold online. Really? So that's probably, yeah, it might be happening all around the country. Like one Goodwill that was sort of my prime source now has a 40 hour a week employee who's researching anything that they think might sell for $30 or more. That's their number and pulling okay. it. So just, you know, keep informed because not every thrift store does that. The mom and pop types might not have that capability and they might not have mm -hmm. an online platform. Um, and then just kind of keep searching to see is this working for me and if you find that all of your items are getting pulled then try somewhere else like i am doing a lot more bin shopping than straight goodwill oh. shopping because the bins get what we call like the raw donations they're getting the overflow that maybe no one sorted through so okay. weirdly because the bins are the outlets you know in my area you're more likely to find something really fabulous at the bins than at the regular store which i don't think is obvious and I think the only way you know is by going to different stores and really seeing what's up. Getting to know the, you know, how the store operates is helpful. Yes. Yes. And even who the manager is, because different managers might have different um, philosophies about mm -hmm. what to put on the shelf and what to pull. Mm -hmm. So very good. Um, I know that you're, you like estate sales as well. So what do you think is your top tips for shopping at estate sales? Well, estate sales, for me, again, this is Southern California. Florida is probably like this. You have a whole long list to go through. And we first do. of all, the, the kind of prime um, online resources, estatesales.net, at least here. So mm -hmm. I would start with the list. You have, can okay. do the map view or you can do the list view and kind of see if you think, oh, I can go on Friday. Like, see what your options are. Mm -hmm. And then I would just be thorough. Like, make sure you read the entire listing if you're interested in the sale. Because sometimes there's some fine print. And it might have to do with how they give out numbers, how you line up, how you can pay. Um, there's often weird stuff buried in there. And if you're just skimming through and clicking through with your phone and not really reading, you might miss some kind of critical detail. So I would say, you know, just read the directions first, use the photos. And now that everyone's on Google Lens, sometimes there, if you go thoroughly through the photos and um, you're flipping through, you might be able to find things maybe in the background that aren't highlighted that the people running the sale don't even realize is, you know, a really great online item. And then you could zero in and really figure out that's a great item for me. I want to go to this sale. I have an idea from Google Lens. Um, what it is, what it's worth, figure out what room it's in. So once you get in the house, you can sort of have a better chance of getting it. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, you're, you're looking at the text of the ad, you're looking at the photos. But then another thing that's very, I think, 2024 is you have to go a little bit beyond. And if you know the name of the company, figure out if they have a social media presence, which okay. is could be Facebook, it could be Instagram, it could be TikTok. Because oftentimes there's another whole set of instructions that you might not know is even out there like a woman oh. i saw at an estate sale this past weekend was saying she went to one that was a kind of newer company she got there she thought she was number one and she was like number 68 because oh. there was an online list that she didn't even know to look for oh and no yeah at least in la that happens there are like these these secret lists these stealth lists so i would say before you invest your time your gas you know your energy just be as there as you can Check at least at least those three online places, 
and the, the site and the photos to be prepared. That's really good tips. Those are very good tips. I, I like estatesale.net myself. And I like your idea with being able to zoom in on those photos and you can kind of see what's in the background that way. Right. right. I mean, sometimes that's like the better item if you're looking for, like we were talking about Disney before we came on. Like sure. sometimes there might be something fantastic that just is just laying on a table flat. And you see the foot and then you can kind of zoom it and figure out exactly what it is. <laughs> That's great. I love it when I go to an estate sale and there's a box under the table that nobody's yes. been through. <laughs> yeah, isn't that perfect? I love that yeah. too. And then another sort of tip is if it's a good sale the first day when it's full price, you know, you might want to come back the last day when it's half price, okay. especially if it's like a box under the table one where every once in a while you get lucky and maybe people haven't gone through everything. That's right. That's right. And, you know, some people will say, well, I don't like estate sales because they overprice. And sometimes you walk in and the prices do seem high, but they can't know everything. So there's always yeah. some some little overlooked items. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yes, I do that. I definitely look for that. Like sometimes I'll go to a sale knowing that they price high, knowing that I'm unlikely to get much on the first day. So I'm mm -hmm. looking exactly for that. Like they might have categories like, say, the scarves are you know, $5 instead of individually pricing them. Like there might be some category that for whatever reason they didn't go through. Mm -hmm. Or I just think it's also a little bit of a scouting mission. Like if they're really great items, some of them are just not going to sell because they're priced too high. So you can say, okay, maybe on Sunday, this is one I want to put on my list to come back to. Great. And um, one final thing, I, I know that um, I've done treasure hunts with you a couple times at the Long Beach Flea Market or the Long Beach Antique Show. Have you been going back there? Or can you share any information with our listeners about that? Yeah, so Long Beach Antique Market is a really popular, really active flea market. It's the third Sunday of every month. And um, some of the same sort of strategies apply, like you could pay more to get in early, which might be a good strategy if you're really looking for the unknown overlooked bargains and you want to get there before other people. Um, it might be worth paying more or just have your favorites. Like I know you have a favorite for purses. Um, I don't know if they've been there lately. But sometimes yeah. you just sort of vibe with someone's booth. So maybe in this huge market, yeah. go there towards the beginning before they get really sold out. And, uh, you know, you could even like if there's someone who you really like and you think they have a good eye and they are good in your categories, like ask them about different things. Like I, dolls is an area for me. So I might say, do you have, you know, X, Y and Z? And they might not have it with them, but they might have it and they could bring it for you the next month. Good tips. Yeah. Another option. I love that show. <laughs> yeah, cool. it's it's a fun one. Actually, in Los Angeles, if you wanted to go any weekend, there's, you know, there's a rotation. There's the Rose Bowl. There's okay. the Long Beach one. Um, there's some that are in Orange County, and there's some that are in Ventura County. So you could sort of do a whole circuit kind of different flea markets every Sunday of the month. But wow. Long Beach is probably, in my opinion, one of the best. I mean, some people yeah. might say Rose Bowl is bigger, but Long Beach, in terms of just sheer number of vendors and variety is really good. Great. Yeah. It's my favorite. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Well, any final words? Um, just thanks for having me. And I encourage people to try new tools, try new platforms, try new ways of sourcing. And just remember, you know, everything changes. You have to keep up and just be flexible. Perfect. Perfect. And what was your code again for list perfectly? Cat lovers. So C A T L O V E R S and it's all caps. I love that. I love that. <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining us and wishing you lots of continued success with your online selling. Thank you, Dan. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Absolutely. Wow. That was some great information. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Dana Crawford, the Power Selling Mom, and you're listening to the Power Selling Podcast. Special thanks to List Perfectly for being our proud sponsor. And you can enjoy a 30% off discount for the first month. Just visit listperfectly.com and use coupon code.
Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm your host, Dana Crawford, The Power Selling Mom, and you're listening to The Power Selling Podcast. So until next time, happy online selling. Bye.